This world doesn't need a hero. It needs a professional. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're exploring the evolution of the Witcher franchise. For this video, we're looking at the history of Polish writer Andrzej Sapkowski's fantasy saga and how it's expanded into other media. If I have to choose between one evil and another, then I prefer not to choose at all. How did you get into The Witcher? Was it through the books, games, or series? Let us know in the comments. The Short Stories Like Geralt himself, The Witcher franchise had relatively humble origins. In 1985, 38-year-old traveling fur salesman and voracious fantasy reader Andrzej Sapkowski decided to enter a short story competition for the Polish fiction magazine Fantastica. What drew you to want to create The Witcher? For me, it is still it is a great mystery of life. It was some impulse, something that came out of the sky. And then becoming a full-time writer it was something that I never imagined. His submission, Viedjmin, or The Witcher, introduced Geralt of Rivia and saw him battle against a Striga, a monster with roots in Eastern European folklore. The story placed third, and the reaction from readers was incredibly positive, breaking the established norm in Poland that fantasy was for children. As fans clamored for more, Sapkowski built on that short story, writing three more about Geralt. All four were compiled and released in 1990 as a short story collection titled The Witcher. I started with the, with the short stories. It was my beginning because <laughs> it, was, it was a must because nobody would publish the book. He went on to release two more short story collections, 1992's Sword of Destiny and 1993's The Last Wish. The latter included all the short stories from The Witcher, excluding one about Geralt's mother. A lot of the stories were inspired by Slavic mythology and well-known fairy tales. For example, a grain of truth has Geralt encounter a cursed man turned beast seeking a cure in the love of a woman. It's a premise that's remarkably similar to Beauty and the Beast, but Sapkowski's version gives it some incredibly dark twists. Oh, the look of a man who's worried he's lost his touch. <laughs> The look of a man who's wondering why his old friend is cheating. Reviewers praise the complex characters and plots that often eschewed traditional black and white morality. In all these tales, the main focus was monster hunter for hire Geralt, but key characters like Yennefer and Ciri were also introduced, enriching and expanding the world that Sapkowski was creating. <laughs> Fans couldn't get enough, and from 1993 to 95, several of the stories were adapted into comic books, providing early visualizations of Geralt's striking white hair and yellow eyes. The novels. As his short stories gained traction, Sapkowski decided to embark on a more ambitious project, a fully developed fantasy saga. In 1994, Sapkowski published his first novel, Blood of Elves. This was followed by the sequels Time of Contempt, Baptism of Fire, The Tower of the Swallow, and The Lady of the Lake. The books focused on Geralt's attempts to protect Ciri, a princess with a natural affinity for magic who's caught up in the political machinations of rival powers. Under Geralt's tutelage, she becomes a witcher in training. Enough. Get down. With a flip? What do you think? All right, take off the blindfold. Sapkowski also later wrote a standalone novel, Season of Storms, set between the short stories in The Last Wish. In Poland, these books were very popular, but it wouldn't be until 2008 that they began to receive official English translations. So in the meantime, fans began translating the novels themselves, bringing them to a wider audience. In times past, no amount of coin would convince a witcher to take this contract. Times have changed. The first live-action adaptations. Given how beloved Sapkowski's books are, it was only a matter of time before they got a live-action adaptation. However, the first attempt was, let's say, not what the fans were hoping for. <laughs> Thank you. 
In 2001, a Polish adaptation of The Witcher, titled The Hexer, was released. Two poor reviews. Hexer was an alternative translation of the Polish word Wiedźmin, the male version of the word Wiedźma meaning witch. However, much more was lost in translation in adapting the books for the screen. The film was criticized as feeling rushed, essentially serving as a two-hour trailer for a 13-episode TV series released the following year. While the casting and music received some praise, the plot and special effects were disliked by critics and fans alike. Andrzej Zabkowski wasn't exactly impressed either. 2001 also saw the release of a tabletop game based on the books called The Witcher, A Game of Imagination. And it seems like that would be the only way for fans to really enjoy The Witcher in a medium outside the books, given the disappointment of the film and TV series. That is, until a certain Polish game development studio set its sights on Sapkowski's epic fantasy world. The Video Games what, what are you doing? Killing monsters. The video game license for The Witcher books was initially picked up by Metropolis Software in 1997. While it began production, it never went anywhere, with the studio's publisher Topware Interactive airing concerns about its international appeal. How wrong they were. In 2002, CD Projekt approached Sepkowski, offering royalties in return for the rights. However, in a move that even Sepkowski has since described as stupid, he instead asked for 35,000 zloty, approximately $9,500 US, up front. He had no interest in video games and didn't believe that CD Projekt could succeed. <laughs> At the time, CD Projekt had never developed a game. They'd only translated and distributed games and begun a PC port of Baldur's Gate. That's it. Their first demo was a top-down RPG similar to Diablo, which they soon abandoned. Shifting gears, they began development again in BioWare's Aurora engine, setting their story after the last book in the series, The Lady of the Lake. The Witcher was finally released on PC in 2007. Reviews were mostly positive, praising its storytelling and immersive gameplay, which included difficult moral choices and time-delayed consequences. While Sapkowski had no involvement, it felt like a continuation of the same world. The game proved so successful overseas that a console port and enhanced edition was released in 2008, eventually leading to a sequel, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings, in 2011. Reception was also very positive, with special praise going to its combat system, graphics, and story. The studio had understood that the detailed world and relationships were what made the series so great, and built on that for the sequel. But it was the third installment that really made The Witcher a household name in the gaming community and beyond. Released in 2015, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt received a staggering 260 Game of the Year awards and is considered one of the greatest games of all time. CD Projekt Red had mastered its world-building, combat and role-playing elements, filling the game's breathtaking open world with details that players can still get lost in today. All just like I remembered. What? For many, this was their first introduction to the series, as the game was released on all major platforms at launch. Given its popularity, this iteration firmly established itself as the adaptation to beat. It was later followed by two spin-offs based on its in-game card game, Gwent The Witcher Card Game and Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Netflix's TV series. Magic doesn't work on me. Silver does though. Silver is for monsters. <laughs> The video game adaptations led to a surge of interest in the franchise, including the original short stories and novels. Since the first game's release, there have been card games, a Dark Horse comic series, a board game, and collections of short stories written by other writers. 
The Wild Hunt brought this popularity to new heights. All these adaptations meant that there was a large enough fan base to have another crack at a live action adaptation. So that's all life is to you? Monsters and money. It's all it needs to be. Netflix's The Witcher was originally going to be a film, but fortunately evolved into a TV series instead. Sapkowski came on as a consultant. A huge fan of The Witcher video games, Henry Cavill was eager to land the role of Geralt, so much so that showrunner Lauren Schmidt Hisrick found his persistence really annoying. So how did you go about casting him for Geralt, and what did he do to convince you that he was a perfect person for the job? Um, he called Netflix a lot once he learned that we were making The Witcher as a series. However, when she finally wrote the script, she couldn't get Cavill's voice out of her head and eventually cast him. I actually didn't get the role. Um, it was a, you know what, sort of, I, I, sort of, it's, thank you, but no thanks. And, right. and then they went through a full casting process. And then I think then they went, oh, actually, let's, let's maybe revisit that. It was a dream come true for the Superman actor, and as it turned out, for fans, because he absolutely embodies the character, as does Freya Allen as Siri and Anya Chalotra as Yennefer. Released in 2019, the first season was based on the short story collections before the main saga. While critics were lukewarm, viewers loved it. During the wait for the second season, Netflix followed up with the animated spin-off Nightmare of the Wolf. There's also a six-part miniseries on the way, Blood Origin, a prequel about the creation of the very first Witcher. All in all, it's a glorious time to be a Witcher fan. People think by destiny we'll always find each other. No matter what company has tackled the Witcher, the dark and adult tone has remained throughout its various iterations. Evil is evil. Lesser, greater, middling makes no difference. There's a hugely expansive lore and plenty of ways to experience the world, from the books to the games and TV and film adaptations. It's detailed characters, fantastical creatures, and dramatic plots fueled by complex relationships have remained the draw for audiences, with almost every version building on the story somehow. If I'm to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose at all. Just make it quick, Geralt. While different adaptations have given slightly different spins on the tales, Geralt's adventures have continued to captivate audiences for over three decades. There's no doubt that we'll continue to see more of him, as long as a coin or two is tossed his way. Toss a coin to your witcher, oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty, oh. Toss a coin to your witcher, oh valley of plenty. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.